Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with Zebu Nation. And here we are back again, Wings of Glory, starring LAFC. This is our mid-season review, so let's take a look, see where we're at in the competitions. And it's, uh, you know, it's looking up from where it was in the first quarter. As you can see here, after 17 games... We got six wins, four draws, seven losses for a total of 22 points and a negative one goal differential. So it's not great or anything like that, but it is an improvement from where we were earlier. We've um, doubled our number of points that we had. I think we had nine points last time we checked in. That was pretty bad. But uh, still, we got a ways to go. Um, interesting to note... The team we last played against, Portland, has taken a precipitous drop. They were in first place when last we left them, and now they're in seventh place. They're within striking distance of us. All we have to do is win one more game, and uh, we've passed Portland. So that's pretty crazy. And, of course, when Portland goes down, who, who rises to the top? It is, of course, their rival, Seattle, sitting up here at the top of the Western Conference with 30 points after 17 games. It's been a, a wacky and wild uh, second quarter of the season. As you can see, Toronto FC is creeping back up towards the top of the table in the Supporters' Shield, uh, following by Orlando City, who's really jumped out, taking a huge lead on the rest of the league. So this is a very, very interesting turn of events that the Eastern Conference has now just... Uh, asserted itself as the best conference as, as they have the top three teams in the league are all eastern conference teams so we got a ways to go to catch those guys but for now i think we just need to focus on the western conference and getting into the playoffs because that is our number one board expectation is uh, to reach the wild card um, and i think it's, it's still doable it's not that far away we just need you know String some, some wins together, and we'll be okay. But before we get to that, let's run down the checklist and see where we're at. The Academy, nothing has happened. We haven't brought anybody up or down or anything like that from the Academy, so that's all fine. Finances, still pretty much where they were. $48 million, seven, you know, almost $8 million in the transfer budget. Payroll, exactly the same. Nothing happening there. Board, our board uh, security, it doesn't look like it's changed, but just a few games ago, it was down in like the 40% range, and there was actually some rumblings of the board, like, you know, taking a look at my status and saying, you know, at least in the media, the media was saying, like, maybe they need to get rid of this guy. And even uh, one of our players, Martinez, came out in the media and said, like, you know, we support our coach and all that kind of stuff. So that's good. We learned that, uh, you know, our rookie of the year last season is behind us, and he's a vocal member of the team now. So that's good. We got his support and support of several other in uh, several other players who are in leadership positions. So I guess we know when the chips are down, the players will support us at least for a little while. But uh, we've managed to bring this back up. Our, our job security is back to 51%, so we're doing okay there. Club-wise, nothing has changed. Um, our new hot prospect, though, Matt Conklin, is now our new hot prospect. He was our number one draft pick this season. He's got some playing time. He's been improving himself and playing well, so that's good. And, and now he's our number one prospect, so... Uh, can't blame anybody for feeling uh, excited about the future. Club, we looked at that. Transfers, Miami came in with a transfer. They wanted Jonathan Smith. And honestly, in any other season, I probably would have traded this guy. But we kind of need him right now. Uh, we don't have a lot of strikers left on the team, and we need all the strikers we can get. So, you know, just keep this guy around and uh, not going to trade him. The trade wasn't that great. It was for $22,000. Possibly forty-two thousand dollars, so it would have been it would have been fine, but we don't we don't really need him, don't really need that money, so it doesn't particularly matter. Transfer history, nothing, nothing has changed other than that one potential 
transfer. So, you know, kind of boring. Mid-season for MLS is kind of boring. The summer transfer window has not yet opened. So, you know, we don't have a lot going on. Competitions, we looked at that schedule. This is where things get interesting. As you can see, last five games, very, very good. Four wins, one draw. And that was a game we should have won, honestly, against Montreal. So, you know, what's changed? What's what's happened? Because if you look just five games earlier than that, the previous five games were really bad. You know, we only had one win in the five games before that. Well, we've gone and we've changed some formations. We've made some tactical changes. We went with the diamond formation a couple of games, and we've gone with this formation for a couple of games. The 4-2-3-1, it's a little bit more of an attacking formation, get more of our players forward and uh, you know not necessarily worry about having a defensive midfielder or anything like that. So this has also worked. We've also had some good games with this and we've managed to put on a winning streak using these two th these two formations. You know, after we looked at in the first quarter of the season, both the fans and the board were complaining about our use of the 4123 DM wide, which worked for us last season. So why it doesn't work this season, I don't know. But just switching that up and getting some new players in there, I guess, has uh, has helped us out. And uh, we're going to continue with that and get to our match preview for our game this week against, uh, well, not against, but it's for the U.S. Cup. This is our big cup competition for the season. We don't need to look at the medical. Uh, the U.S. Cup right here. We're playing against... Oklahoma City, which is uh, the affiliate team for FC Dallas. So they've got some good players on their squad. Take a look at their senior squad. We don't know any of these guys, but take a look at this. These are some names that you should be familiar with if you watched any of our FC Dallas um, playthroughs, which we've done over the seasons, over the years even. I think FM 17 and 18, we've done FC Dallas saves. So you should be familiar with Paxton Pomichol, the young 19-year-old uh, hot prospect for FC Dallas. He's a very good central midfielder. When I play with FC Dallas, I start this guy. So the fact that he's in the reserves for Oklahoma City, you know, that makes this a fairly um, talented squad. They also have Koi Kraft who's a very good player as well. I've played this guy in the regular the the regular FC Dallas team before and same with Adonija Reed, another one of their top prospects, 19-year-old uh, poacher. So they've got a lot of firepower on this Oklahoma City Energy team. Players who are good enough to play in the MLS, maybe not starter quality right now, but definitely starter quality in the future. So we gotta we gotta watch out for this team, and uh, let's get to the match preview. So there we are. We are the favorites, seven to four, four to seven favorites. I don't know how that works, but favorites, none the less. All right, so we're going with a rotated squad, of course, but we are going with the four-two-three-one formation. We got some of our starters down here in the reserve, so if we need them. We can bring them in, but I like to use the the U.S. Cup, especially the first round of the U.S. Cup, to get some of our players playing time, like this fella right here, Brent Mendez, who uh, he, he's had an interesting journey this season. He got injured early in the season, so we put him on, on injured reserve, just the six-game injured reserve, but uh, he was on international duty because this is a... Uh, uh, what do we call it? This is an Olympics year in uh, 2019, or at least an Olympic qualifying year. So he's been on the road with Belgium like all season, and that's actually allowed him to be fit, even though he's been injured for us and hasn't been playing. So that's helped out. He's one. He was previously our top prospect, so now he's going to be. Uh, you know. We've got really a wealth of top prospects, and we're going to try to get several of them in the game today. So we've got Boucher in goal, which is a rarity for him uh, to be able to play in our goal because, you know, we've got such a good goalkeeper. We just no need to, to 
have anybody else in goal. So he's going to get a rare opportunity. Chavez and Duncan at the fullback positions. Alash, we brought him down from the midfield to play central defense, and he's going to be teamed with Mendez. Mainly, I wanted to get some other players in here, but Alash was the most fit, and I didn't want to have like completely unfit guys running around this squad. So there's a few starters, a few veterans, and uh, you know we're going to try to do what we can. We got Thompson and the other youngster, Conklin, in the midfield. Then up top, we got Covea and Lowe, one of our rookies at the wingers. Fernandez is uh, taking over the center mid spot. He's, he, you know, he's been a pretty good, pretty versatile player for us. We haven't played him much, but uh, you know, he's played well for us when we got in there. And then we're going to have uh, you know, some firepower in there. We're going to have Rodrigo in there. He's been playing very well for us. Look at this, 7.3 rating in 10 appearances. So he's, you know, starting to earn that money that we're paying him, and that's good. All right, dressing room, team talk. Uh, come on, guys, show me what you can do. Okay, Dun Duncan's the only guy happy about that. That's fine. Kickoff, let's see. Uh, I don't care about that. So here we are, Oklahoma City. They got a nice little stadium here. Plenty of uh, amenities out there. You can see they got the old hot dog vendor and whatnot. We are in the away whites. It's, of course, raining because it rains every single game in FM18. I don't know what it is, but it's just nonstop rain. This is our first highlight, so it's probably going to end poorly, and there it is as uh, Oklahoma City gathers that wayward ball. Take a little drink of tea here. So at the midway point, I think we're on an upward trajectory, and that's good. You know, I got a little frustrated there in the first quarter because we didn't have a lot of big roster changes in the offseason. I thought, you know, that continuity would carry us through to the first half of this season, but apparently not. Apparently every season is a new season in, in FM18, and you got to rebuild your squad harmony from scratch. So hopefully that happens. All right, here's a highlight. Oklahoma City gets the ball on the near side. We've got Dixon centers it to somebody what is that name kirasama that's a pretty cool name kirasama okay his shot was over the goal but we'll keep an eye on that guy here's another highlight for oklahoma city dixon again on the near side sydney mendez is there the young belgian clears it but um oklahoma city seems to be playing back pretty well on defense they're not taking too many chances Here's Guzman again to Dixon. We're going to have to close down on this Dixon character. Kurosama to Wheeler Ominu. <clears throat> Got to get used to these names. There's Reynolds with a shot. So none of the big the big lone guys are in there. It's interesting. Are they on the bench? There's Kraft and Pomichol on the bench. So <clears throat> the fact that those guys aren't playing is... Uh, oh, look at this. Covea gets in behind the defense. His shot is well over, though. We've got a good supporter section there in the background. That's good. So the fact that those guys aren't starting, um, that could be good for us, but it could be bad because they might be the first reserves off the bench, and they'll come at us late in the second half, and that could uh, that could definitely pose some problems. All right, here's Covea. Back to Chavez. Chavez already has a yellow card. He boots it forward to H Rodrigo. Hmm. Not great form there, my man. We might want to try to work the ball downfield on these guys. Mendez has an injury. Not happy about this. Potential upper body injury. Here's Duncan with a free kick. That's odd to see Duncan taking free kicks, but whatever. I guess we don't have any of our... our uh, major starters in the uh, lineup right now so somebody's got to take those kicks martinez isn't in there obviously tejeda and those kind of guys are not in there duncan sends it in a uh, header from sydney thompson Cavea, Cavea, come on buddy take your time you got 15 finishing i don't know how many times i have to say it to this guy concentrate take your time He's got 15 finishing. 
but he never finishes. I don't understand. All right, Karasama, double cover, drops it back for uh, Oklahoma City. He gets it back in a crowd. There's our defense, sends it long to nobody in particular. Tobin gathers it in for Oklahoma City, gets it to the far side to Angolo. He's dispossessed by Duncan, though. Just another ball fired upfield. Um, as soon as this highlight's over, we're going to go to, I think, control. Karasama gets it up front to Boucher. Um, Boucher makes the stop. He didn't pass it to Boucher. That was a great stop anyway. All right, here's Oklahoma City again. We're going to make the call. We're going to go control, uh, retain possession, work work the ball, tighter marking, close down, all that stuff. And a penalty. Mendez. All right, you're going crazy, my man. You got an injury. You're arguing with the ref. He's walking right by you like you're a ghost. And uh, we're giving up a penalty. This is no good. Reynolds. All right. Reynolds wrap. Oh, wow. Okay, I was going to say, is that such a bad penalty kick? They're not even going to show it, but no, here it is. Reynolds. Boucher. Oh, he almost, he almost made the stop, sort of. He made an attempt in the right direction, I guess. That was pretty good. Oh, they come on, guys. We can't lose to Oklahoma City. I mean, I know I talked him up in the beginning, but that's just what coaches do, right? Coaches always talk up the opponent and say, um, you know, they're going to be tough and all that stuff. We're going to get... We're definitely going to get Mendez out of there. He is He's out of control. 6.3 rating. He's got an injury. He's got a penalty against him. So get out of there. We're going to bring in the veteran Hagland. You know, one of our one of our triumvirate of starters at central defense. So we're not we're not taking these guys lightly anymore. Bringing in the big boys. See if we can get an equalizer before half. That would be good, but I don't think so. We're just sort of the clock is just going crazy right now. Forty-three minutes down. Forty-four minutes. Things are not looking good. We've had almost no highlights this whole match. Had a couple of wayward shots, but that's about it. Two minutes of stoppage time. One minute down. Just about two minutes down. So we're going to end the half on a whimper. Players looking nervous and frustrated. Don't like that. Rodrigo is uninterested. We're going to have to yell at these guys at halftime. Do we have any analysis to go for? No. All right, pep talk. Team talk. Let's get assertive and say, where's your passion? Do you even want to win this match? All right. Tactics. What are we going to do? I mean, I guess we'll stick with this and see. Maybe we'll go attacking. Let's get nuts. Go attacking. Start the second half. Put the pressure on these guys. Get up in their grill. Try and uh, try and do something. Let's go. Here's Guzman for Oklahoma City. It's just the first highlight of the match, or the half. Uh, Chavez can't get there. Dixon on the wing crosses it to nobody, but Hagelin, that was a risky header, my man. Didn't like that. You should have just let the ball go out of bounds. But here we are on the counter attack. Okay. They sucked me in thinking it was going to be a real highlight, but no. Not at all. All right, here we go. 48 minutes in. Here's Conklin. Gets it too low on the right-hand side. Back to Conklin. Look at the youngster making the run. He crosses it. Sends it straight to the goalkeeper, but we, uh, we get a corner out of it. Let's see who's taking these corners. Thompson chips it in. Nobody is there, but Covea is going to win it. Fernandez takes a shot. Nope. No good. He's going to get it right back on the rebound. Send it back out wide to Thompson, who's offside. Offside. That's what happens. All right. We got a couple of guys still looking nervous and frustrated. Chavez has that yellow card. Not happy about that, but here we are. Tobin throw in on the near side for Oklahoma City. They get it forward. Cross field to Dixon. He's crossing the midline. The 
defense is backing off, backing off. Here comes Chavez. Can't afford to challenge. It's another shot on goal, and Boucher is there for the stop. Lowe has been error-prone today, sitting at uh, 6.4. Everybody on our attacking side has just got an awful rating right now. It's another highlight for Oklahoma City. Not happy about this. A header in and over the net. Reynolds, that should have been a goal. Be super honest with you right there. All right. Going to bring in Pacheco for low. See if we can do something there. Other than that, I mean, we could bring in Smith for Rodrigo. That's kind of a... Uh, backwards step but you never know sometimes these young guys go crazy in uh in these kinds of games um i don't know we'll we'll save that for later i think pacheco is an upgrade on the right wing so we'll see if that improves our offense at all here's another highlight for oklahoma city reynolds sends it into karasama he is wide open on that wing. Sends it back to get a... Oh, he hits the post. Reynolds. Unbelievable. We're getting so lucky. These guys should be up, too, against us, and it's just not working. Um, let's get stuck in. That's the only other change we can make right now. I mean, we're fouling people enough, but let's foul them the right way, I guess. There we go. Thompson sends it in. It's sent right back out by Oklahoma City, and Reynolds has it now on the counterattack. Our defense is back, so that's nice if they challenge these guys. They're backing off so much, Dixon. They're, we're supposed to be closing down. I don't understand. Here's a Gulo. Sends it in, and there's Karasama. That's probably the game winner right there. So we took these guys lightly. We played a lot of reserves, and they made us pay for it. Dixon sends it wide to Angolo. And then Karasama beats uh, our fullback on the back post there. Beats Chavez. That was the left-hand side, right? Yep. That was his mohawk in the air getting beat. <sighs> That's no good. 72 minutes down. Here's another highlight for Oklahoma. Are they going to embarrass us with a three-goal victory? They are. They are going to embarrass us. Wow. I guess we're uh, not as good as we think that we can just play all of our rookies and uh, young players and prospects and, and beat a team like Oklahoma City. I mean, we should be able to beat these guys. They are... Third division. Third division, and we can't beat them with our reserves. It's not even like we were playing all reserves. We had you know, a few of our starters in there. It's just no good. Here's Fernandez. Gets it for Rodrigo not paying attention. Haglin, Duncan just blasts it downfield. Pacheco manages to grab it, though. A little back pass to Conklin. Got our fullback getting up field, but... Uh, Maybe at the wrong time as Karasama is going right where our fullback vacated. He's going to get another cross. Oof. Wheeler Ominu almost had a fourth goal against us. All right. We're going to get Rodrigo out of there. That's not what I wanted. We're going to get Rodrigo out of there. Bring in Smith with a deep lying forward. That's his best role. You know, if he's not going to pay attention, if he's if he's going to be uninterested in this match, we might as well get him out of there. Here's Oklahoma City again. Dixon has it, chips it forward to Karasama, out wide to Sydney, another cross, but Hagland is there. Ay vey. So, um, hopefully this is just... Oh, boy. So we've made our last substitute, apparently. But uh, Chavez got injured. Yeah. Can't tell if he got thrown out or injured. So I guess 
We'll have to do something like this. Move Thompson down to fullback. Move Fernandez down to the midfield. I mean, uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter that we're down to 10 men. We're losing 3-0. We're not going to come back from that. Here we are. Corner from Pacheco. Intercepted by Tobin, but Covea sends it back in. Fernandez, Conklin gets it forward. Nice pass. Bad finish. That seems to be, uh, you know, microcosm of our season this year. Is some nice passing with some bad finishing. Uh, even though we were... Paying our strikers a lot of money, but, you know, whatever. Whatever, money doesn't always equal performance. You should, we should all know that in sports. Uh, let's see, there's Covea. Fernandez out wide. He's double covered. Drops it all the way back to Thompson. Playing that fullback role now. Here's Conklin. Fernandez. Ooh, nope. 86 minutes, and here is Oklahoma City on the counterattack. A bad pass, and Duncan is there to clean it up. Haglin drops it back to Boucher, a lash. Maybe it wasn't such a great idea to put him in the defensive midfield, but look at this. Here's Smith, the youngster, the draft pick from last season. Uh, yeah. I mean, he seemed to have an open goal. It was a tight window. I'm going to give you that. And for a guy with 10 finishings, probably not... We shouldn't be counting on him, but it seemed like he had a bit of an opening there and just couldn't finish it. Right. And then he heads it out of bounds. Good try, but you know, he's at least trying. Whereas uh, Rodrigos was obviously uninterested. 6.2 rating. All right, four minutes of stoppage time. So going forward, as I started to say, we need uh, we need this to be just a blip in the road. There's a nice foul from Pacheco. We need this just to be a blip in the road, and we need to continue that form that we had in the last five games because uh, you know a game like this is just unacceptable. We'll get fired if we have too many more of these games. So we got another... Uh, 17 games left in the season, so we'll probably play, you know, eight or nine games and come back and show you the third quarter of the season and see how we how we do there. Obviously, the U.S. Cup is going to be over for us, um, so we won't have that competition. We don't have any other competitions coming up, no Champions League or anything like that. So it's all about the MLS now. It's all about making the playoffs. Pacheco gets dispossessed at midfield. Here's Oklahoma City just sending one down in field for the last couple of seconds. And there we go. Merciful ending. A huge victory for Oklahoma City. Kind of an embarrassment to go out like that to a Division Three team. But what are you going to do? You're going to yell at people, I guess. Let's be aggressive that wasn't good enough no excuses for not winning that match you guys should have been good enough to beat those guys but uh we're obviously not all right so here we go defeat in the fourth round and we were supposed to reach the quarterfinals so we fell up very short of that board confidence 27 percent did that uh we're still stable. We've dropped to 49%, though, with that loss. So you can see how fickle the board is right now. They're just going up and down like a yo-yo. We're going to have to continue stringing together positive results. Mendez out for two days. I don't know what his deal was. He went crazy. Obviously, he doesn't have a lot of composure, but still, come on. Can't uh, can't be doing all of that. Chavez likewise injured. This is why I like to play a lot of reserves in these matches because you never know what's going to happen. You know, you get a desperate lower division team on the injury list. We talking about always four to five weeks. Ouch. That is a bit of a problem because we're very low on left fullbacks to begin with. So I'm gonna have to go out and look for a left fullback. I think we have one on the. Under 18s? We do. 
He is not very good. Michael Friedland, but he is 18 years old. He does have 13 tackling. Ouch. Brutal. This guy is brutal. 19 teamwork. That's amazing. But other than that, yeah, he's unambitious. Oof, I don't want to play this guy, I'm going to be honest with you. So I'll probably just look at it in the free agent market or wait until when does the... Uh, oh, how long until the summer transfer? It's only March. So we got like three months before the transfer window opens. July. And let's... Yeah. So yeah, we got... Uh, a long way to go, so we'll pick up somebody, pick up a free agent somewhere, and give him a couple of bucks to come in and play left, reserve left fullback for us, and uh, yeah, go on from there. So there you go, another sort of uh, disappointing episode, I guess. That's two in a row. Usually, you know, we kind of like to go like struggle and then achieve and struggle and achieve and sort of you know work your way up, but we got two struggling episodes in a row. Although, schedule-wise, I mean, we've still done pretty well. So, you know, let's not let this dampen our spirits for the second half of the season. And let's roll on towards what should be a playoff run, hopefully. Uh, if not, it will be a huge disappointment. So, until then, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.